Hey everybody, BM Collectibles here, back for another statue unboxing review for you. Buckle up your seatbelts, I am about to showcase to you one of my favorite all-time Pokemon statues to date. Moonshadow Studio had the brilliant idea to create statues based on the original Kanto Elite Four, and this one is going to be focusing on Lance, the Dragon Trainer. At the center of the statue, you will see a mound of stalagmite that Lance will be standing on top of. Wrapping around the statue is what looks to be an energy effect. I'm going to be calling this Dragon Energy based on something we will see later on in the statue. Turning the statue around, I wanted to showcase to you how vibrant and awesome all the colors look all throughout top to bottom. You can see the greens, blues, purples, yellows. Man, did they do a fantastic job at coloring this effect. The trim around the base of the statue is where Moon Shadow Studio really takes it to the next level. On there are what looks to be the ancient Pokemon hieroglyphics of the evolution line, Dratini, Dragonair, and Dragonite. All in all, this has to be one of the most impressive bases I've ever seen for a statue. Incoming Lance, I love the dynamic pose that they chose for him. His hand towards the back makes it look like he is commanding his Pokemon to attack, and I love all the different shading in his hair. It goes from dark red in the front to more of an orange in the back. I hope I'm able to capture this, but all throughout the paint application on this is phenomenal. He's got these kind of metal buckles all throughout that they were able to paint and you can see very, very detailed. There's a circular one on the foot you can see holding some of the straps on the boot. Also, I love how the cape looks like he just dropped from on high, how it's all tattered and torn. Mounted on his right shoulder is none other than the first stage of Dragonite's evolution, Dratini. Back in the original Pokemon Blue Game Boy game, he was one of the most sought after Pokemon for me. On the bottom, you'll see that crevice where he's able to attach to Lance's shoulder. And man, the paint job on this is just so clean. It looks exactly like it jumped from out of a show or a video game. If you look closely on the cape of Lance, you'll see that little notch in which he magnetizes right on there securely. As if Lance didn't look cool enough already, throw a Jatini on his shoulder and he looks that much cooler. Another Pokemon that Lance commonly used was the fossil type Aerodactyl, who was resurrected by the old Amber in the original Gen 1. I swear, this is going to be the last time I'm going to say this word because honestly, the whole statue is this. It's dynamic. Aerodactyl looks so wild and active as if he's right about to use an ability in a battle. I don't know what it was about fossil types in the original, but they were always so intriguing to me. I think it had to do with the fact that you couldn't catch them in the wild and you had to choose which one you want to resurrect when you did. Just like Dratini, you'll have the notch on the bottom, which allows him to connect to the Dragon Energy part of the base. In the Johto region, there was an area you could visit called the Lake of Rage, which housed a unique Pokemon. The shiny Gyarados. The sculpting on this Pokemon is huge. It's about the size of my whole forearm if I hold it up against it. The hole you see on the side here is where one of the whiskers will later be installed. If there ever was a shiny Pokemon that really embodied that cool factor in a Pokemon, it is Red Gyarados. And the fact that it started off from a golden Magikarp makes it that much cooler. As you can see, per the standard of this statue, all the sculpting is perfect and the paint application is just spot on. I love it. They even managed to capture the perfect, grumpy, angry looking Gyarados face. I'll only connect one on camera, but I wanted to show how these were installed on the side of him. They're very fragile, so I'm so happy they sculpted these separately. Would love to hear in the comments below, out of the Pokemon shown and represented in the statue, which one is your favorite? Another Pokemon that was a rare treat if you fished it in the wild? None other than Dragonair. If there were two words that I had to use to describe this Dragonair, and there's actually a second Dragonair, it would be elegant and beautiful. I love the paint color choice for the orbs on the tail as well as the one under the chin. It looks like 
metallic blue and then these notches on the bottom are only exclusive for this Dragonair. The other one has a different way that it connects so that they can both come together. hope you can see what I mean about these two just being beautiful in the way that they do connect. So on the bottom, there's a notch on the second Dratini that allows it to connect to the other one. And on the very top, it's the same thing where it allows it to connect. I use some blue tack, if you can't see right there, to kind of help reinforce them, being sure that they held together safe and secure. I think it was awesome where and how they decided to pose him behind Lance. My all-time personal favorite Pokemon is none other than Dragonite. It could not have done a better job at sculpting this Pokemon. One of the things I've always enjoyed about Dragonite is he's a nice stocky and thick boy, but at the same time, he's a brute. He is strong. They sculpted these on top separately, just like Gyarados, so thank goodness because those are very fragile pieces. You can't see it here, but somewhere on the belly of him is a magnet that's impacted that helps him sit securely onto the base. They could not have done more justice for my favorite Pokemon. I love how when we install him onto the statue, it's like he's the leader of the pack charging ahead. This statue is considered the EX or Deluxe Edition because it came with the shiny Gyarados and also it came with an extra of Horsey evolving into Seedra. To my knowledge, the regular version does come with the standard blue Gyarados and does not come with this extra statue. He looks so stinking cute and I love the fact that the watery looking dragon energy is in the shape of what Seedra is going to look like once Horsey evolves. Nice felt pad on the bottom, and man, if this statue wasn't good enough already to throw in an extra like this, just puts the sprinkles on the icing on the cake for me. If you've seen some of my other Pokemon statue unboxings, I do typically have PSA graded cards to go along with my statues. And I always collect in the grade of seven because it's both affordable and I love the idea of having 777 lucky numbers all around. Well, I know this is the regular Blue Gyarados. This is one of the original base set cards that means a lot to me. I would eventually love to get the Shining Gyarados that was in the Neo Genesis set, but we'll see. Of all the poses they could have used for this card, he's literally sitting there looking like he's shy with a nice rainbow behind him. He looks so calm-natured, but when I think of Dragonite, I think of a fierce Pokemon. For me, this is one of the earliest Dragonite cards that I ever owned. Not this one specifically, but just that card. So again, I had to have it for the collection. Overall, this statue just checks so many boxes off for me personally. It has a lot of Pokemon I like. It's dynamic. It's balanced, well-rounded. I love if you look at here, again, the well-roundedness just continues. Yes, it's a little vertically tall, but it also has the width to compensate for that as well. As I mentioned before, I wanted to show you the standard version of the statue with the blue Gyarados. I think this looks just as nice. Moonshadow also has the first member of the Elite Four that you battle, Lorelei, the Ice-type user. This one is looking just as strong as Lance's, so I do have it on pre-order and cannot wait to showcase it on the channel. Just like shown today, the Lapras for Lorelei does have a two different variants where you will have the shiny purple and the regular blue. I personally am going with the standard version. This statue is what I would consider to be a dream come true because it's something that I always wanted, never thought someone would do, and man, if they didn't go above and beyond my expectations, wants, and desires in how they executed this statue. If you enjoy Pokemon statue unboxings, look forward to a lot of others that I'll be showcasing later throughout this year. Also, I'll mention if you are enjoying my content, please be sure to consider subscribing to the channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss when my videos drop, Thank you to my current subscribers who take time out of their day to enjoy my content, make comments, interact. I can't wait to talk with everyone about this one and how you enjoy it. As always, everybody, do what you love and love what you do. Bam out.